Let's watch a movie. I got my little giant lady look-alike right here. Got uh, Thomas here as well. He's seen better days. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, I'd say we are ready to begin. Careful how you position that Isle of Man logo, it looks a bit too similar to something else. Hello, I'm Mr. Conductor, and I'm going to tell you a story about trains. They're cold engines, you idiot! And the magic railroad that brought them together. Yeah. Thomas theme. This is the island of Sodor, where Thomas and his friends live. Exposition, exposition, Russia, how they are It's at one end of my special universe. Hello, Thomas. Hello, James. Ah, now, this scene here, people say that they don't see Thomas, even though James says hello to him in this scene. I see Thomas, I don't know what you guys are talking about. He's right there, his shadow is there. Look at that, see? Thomas is there, and he's there, and Clarabel's there. You don't see him fully, but you see his shadow. The shot just wasn't extended enough for you to see him. I like helping out here. By the invitation of Sir Topham Hatt, of course. Now hold up. That bridge there. Is that the bridge Bulgy got stuck under? Five, six, seven, eight. Why is Gordon's model chipped? I'm counting how many seconds late you are. Why would it matter if Thomas is arriving late or early since there are no humans on the island? And I have a theory for that. I'm going AC race best on you guys. Get ready. Thomas and the Magic Railroad takes place long after the Sodor fallout. And somehow, due to the genetic mutation, of the nuclear blast, their faces somehow mutated back to normal, and trains, the Sodor engines, become the most dominant species on the island because the humans are wiped out during the nuclear blast! Or it's just a movie about talking steam engines. You weren't on time, little Thomas. And you're being bossy, Gordon. And you're being a huge tender, Gordon. <laughs> These will be one nine nine reference. If anyone got it. Get out of my way! Get out of my way! Even though there's nobody on my rails, get out of here! I have unfinished business here, and I want to finish it fast. And Sodor is apparently home to giant pencils. The diesel tens back. Oh. That right there, folks. That's where the Mattel bouncing problem began. Every now and then. There appears a sign. I don't care about this song, it's so boring! This is your shining time. This is the shining time. <laughs> and by the way, I think that you're going to help me and Thomas somewhere in this story. Why do I get the feeling that that scene there where Thomas is crossing over the viaduct why do I feel like that was supposed to be part of the chase scene? Because he had that face, that same facial expression as he was crossing the bridge in the chase. If Diesel has unfinished business... There's a lot of reused shots in this film. It's actually kind of lazy. Especially for Thomas's first theatrical outing. There's sure to be trouble right around the corner. Another goof. Thomas was just on the set where two rails were next to each other. Now he's only on a set of rails where there's only one. Who filmed this movie? I really think this would have done better if James was voiced by Michael Angelis. What are you doing in the sheds, James? I'm feeling a little blue, which isn't so hot when you're red. Ha! <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt told me to think about all the ways I can be really useful. Then I can come out again. I find that facial expression on Thomas so funny. Also, he seems to be steaming out of his face. Hmm, I didn't know steam engines could do that. Steam engines are cowardly, cranky, worn-out hunks of metal. And they say cranky because he was supposed to be in this movie at some point. <laughs> yeah. Who couldn't hurt a fly. McFly. I've come back to find a lost steam engine. What? I, I love that James questions him, like, what are you talking about? There's no lost engine here. Do you mean Duke? He, I mean, he's lost. He might be buried underground somewhere. I don't know. 
And then you'll be nothing but useless scrap. Right, Pinchy? No one could convince me otherwise that Pinchy is his own sentient thing, because there's no way Diesel Tim would smack himself in the face with Pinchy later on in the film. Pinchy has to be his own sentient creature! I'm telling you! The Magic Railroad parody is canon, I swear! You won't dominate us, and you won't destroy her! We won't let you! Neither will Mr. Conductor! I want to fetch him now! I really don't mind Thomas's voice that much. Like, I do like, um... I do like both the voices, from the director's cut and the final theatrical cut. I like them both. They, they both sound alright. What lost engine? Duke! I really like Billy Two Feathers. I, I wish he was in the movie a little more. And that's actually a bit weird because this movie's supposed to be about Thomas and yet he barely appears at all in this film. It's... Hello, Shining Time Station Manager Stacy Jones speaking. Oh yes! Now people complain that Thomas and Shining Time should have at least taken place in the same world because the only different thing is that the trains talk. But I personally don't mind it being in its own fantasy world. I like it that way. Kind of. Yeah. I'm split somewhere in the middle between that debate. Oh, Billy! Oh no, my car fell off the edge of the... Oh no! Burnett Stone! <laughs> it's hard to believe Burnett could have ever looked that happy. That's a bit harsh. Could I help you, Mr. Stone? Sure. You could help me dust her off. This engine's name is Lady. You know, this scene was actually supposed to take place, like, much later in the film. I'm talking, like, the third act. So I don't know why they moved it so close to the beginning. Is it because we needed exposition in the first ten minutes? Is, is that why? I think, I think that might be why. I mean, this story is pretty complex, but was I... I, I gotta go on a side run here. I was the only person on planet Earth, as a child, like a ten-year-old child who understood the entire story of this movie. Evil Diesel shows up and wants to destroy a lost engine. Steam engines try to stop him. Young girl goes to visit her grandfather who owns this train. And... They embark on an adventure to save the Magic Railroad with Mr. Conductor. That's it! Is it really that hard to get behind? Really? It took- it, it, Is it really that hard to get behind Nostalgia Critic? Really? Long ago, I made a mistake as Lady's caretaker. An evil diesel found Lady and threatened to destroy her. He chased her, used up all her coal, made her go too fast, and then he crashed her. You know, some people complain about Fonda's acting in this film. I like it. I mean, his sadness is very well justified because his wife has only recently passed away, someone that was really dear to him, and she loved his, like, he, she loved him for his love for trains and, like, all that stuff with the railroad, and they held, like, quite a responsibility to fix Lady together, but unfortunately couldn't get it done in time for his wife to take a ride on Lady, and that's actually kind of sad, like, he, he tried to do something before she died, and he couldn't do it. I mean, there was a lot of pressure on this guy. Like, this guy alone was expected to protect a magic, like, world, an entire world. And for him to now do that by himself as long, like, along with the depression of his recently deceased wife, it's, it's quite a lot. Are we sure this is a film for kids? You captured the real me. I mean, that, that's beautiful. I could cry. Ah, uh, now for the greatest two engines in the entire franchise of Thomas. Don't talk to me about any other twins. Listen, you two, I, uh, I got a job for you, Splodge. Actually, it, it's a splatter. <clears throat> and, and die. I love these two, they're great. I wish we saw more of them after this movie. They were supposed to come back in Day of the Diesels and The Great Race, but for whatever reason, they didn't. Weird, I would have liked to see these two in CGI. I've come back to find a steam engine. Oh, it's easy. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, you can't miss. Not the one I want. She escaped me once before, 
As long as she exists, so do the others. But if she can be destroyed, uh, destroyed. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is a, a, a kids movie. I, I don't think Destination is gonna allow that. We're not all by Mattel. We can do whatever the hell we want. Really got a mess when Thomas had these kind of stakes where Diesel Tim was willing to literally kill all the steam engines to just have his own world where Diesel's ruled everything. Like. He is literally intending, and it, though it's not put that way or explained very well, to literally scrap, aka kill, all the steam engines, and that's quite dark, but I like it. I miss when Thomas had these kind of stakes, and now we have... Um, go away, no one cares about you. I care about this! <laughs> ah, Thomas theme again. Fun! Aye, 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 aye. All aboard! Oh, the mic peaked a little bit there, I heard that. Important day, Mr. C? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that laugh. He could give Santa laughing lessons. That was, that was the perfect... Oh, ho, 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 ho. That was brilliant. Sir Topham Hatt has given me a big responsibility. Diesel tennis back. And I have to make sure that he behaves himself. Why are they saying that Diesel tennis back? He's never been in the series before. My friend Thomas Lawrence, who is my James and Splatter voice actor, told me that literally, like, this movie, according to his headcanon, I think he said, takes place during season one, which is why we don't see many characters like Boko or uh, Donald and Douglas or Oliver from the later seasons or Bology or any of those characters. And I'd have to say that's probably correct because I can't have it any other way at this point because. The Steam Team are pretty much the only TV show characters that show up. Gotta appreciate they got the same actress for Stacey Jones from the actual Shining Time show. I'd never seen the actual Shining Time TV show myself, because, you know, UK, I grew up with just the regular four and a half minute VHS tapes. So I actually still gotta sit down and watch Shining Time. This place looks like the island of Sodor, but how would Burnett Stone travel there without gold dust? We walk. The to wear and back again reference, if anyone got it. <laughs> I just came to say goodbye. I have to go now. Right now? I mean, it's bad enough that we take up most of this movie without Thomas in it. We gotta have Thomas. This is Thomas and the Magic Railroad after all. Even though we're in this movie more than Thomas and kind of defeats the purpose. Old Smokey, you stay right here until I get back. You picked the wrong tree, fool! <laughs> Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Frick yeah, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty much pre-programmed to say that at this point. I think all the tankies are. Oh, look who showed up once more. It's Tamis. I have to see Sir Topham Hat to get my orders right away. Uh, I hate to inform you this, sir, but um, the fat controller's already gone on holiday. I think you're a little bit late. Perhaps if you didn't steam out exposition to everyone at Shining Time, you would have been able to see him in time, but oh well. Old McDiesel had a plan. <laughs> With a pinch, pinch here and a pinch, pinch there. Here a pinch, there a pinch. <laughs> I cracked myself up. What was the need for that scene with the old McDiesel? Like, what did that add to the plot whatsoever? I mean, that's not a complaint. More like confusion a little bit. Like, why did we need that scene? It's a little weird, but whatever. This is where Burnett's granddaughter, Lily, comes into our story. Oh boy, the most hated character by the Thomas community in this movie. Grandpa's been so sad since Grandma Tasha died. Ah, they said died in a Thomas film. Oh. But I'd rather just stay here with you. I'd rather just stay here with you and not be a part of this movie. See you in a minute. Is it not of any concern that she could slip off that ladder and fall to her death? It's raining, damn it. You're coming with me to Grandpa's Bluebird. I know how much you like to travel. I really like that piano scene. The steam engines were confident, cheerful, and determined not to be bullied by Diesel. I really like the whistles in this movie. They seem to fit more than the TV show. Is that just me? Puffy Pistons. Language, Thomas. I should have collected Mr. Conductor. James is right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second there, folks. This is one of my biggest problems with the movie. 
Why is Thomas bigger than Gordon in this shot? What? 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 Thomas is... Pull, pull it up on the big screen. Thomas is bigger than Gordon here. <laughs> I mean, I, I think... Like... Thomas is, like, huge compared to Gordon, and Gordon says he's small. He's big, like... <gasps> like a titan. <gasps> da 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 Important is big. James is a big engine, hmm? Mm. You, Thomas, are small. Small, 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 teeny, weeny, weeny. Uh, compared to you, Gordon, he's really not. Little engines can do big things. That was referenced in the Royal Engine. I don't know if that was a callback to this movie or not, but... Nah. The boss done sneezing powder everywhere. That's another little problem I have with this. How did Diesel 10 dump sneezing powder behind the sheds? There are no rails that go right behind the sheds, okay? No. Unless, like, I think, actually, what he did is, like, Pinchy grabbed the sneezing powder and just chucked it over, like, round the sheds. Like, he pulled up behind the shed, like, where Thomas is, and just chucked a bunch of sneezing powder bags, like, all that. And this, it's getting dusted up now. That's probably what happened. See, for every nitpick, there's a world-building explanation. Little Shy if I am was right. Huh. Oh, sorry, bro. It's a bit of a dust-up. Love to stay in clean-up. Got to go. Bye now. Harold just makes a huge mess and leaves it for the steam engines to clear up. He's still as much as a butthole as he was in the series. This must be Diesel's doing. Uh, choo! Choo! No. 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 No, Thomas. No. Where were you? <laughs> and this point, ladies and gentlemen, is the beginning of Alec Baldwin's descent into madness. Also, I do like, um, these screenshots from, like, um, well, like, yeah. photos from, like, a season one, two, three, four, or five episodes. That's a nice callback. I like that. And how is Lady Hat? Doesn't exactly make sense to me that Lady Hat is wooden. Does that mean, like, they actually are wooden in this universe of Thomas? And, like, in Shining Time, they're, like, normal humans? It's a little weird. I, it's something that's unexplained, but gloss over it. So who dropped the ball then? Who kicked that ball to him? Who kicked that ball to him? I always, as a kid, I always imagined Thomas would like, do like, what was his name was? Um, as, oh, what was his name? Um, it was like DeWilstonator's really old Thomas channel, and he'd like, do the thing where it's like, he'd, he'd grow a, a leg or a hand from his buffer, and he just, I imagine he'd just kick the ball to him. Is that just me who imagined that as a kid? A little weird, don't you think? There's another one of those things that makes Diesel 10 all the more of a compelling villain. I love it. He's just so creepy. He sneaks up on the sheds and ruins the scaffolding that they've been working on throughout the day. All that hard work just... <laughs> he didn't even need to knock down the rest of the scaffolding. He just felt the need to ruin that hard work. <laughs> I knocked over your scaffolding. Ooh, I'm so evil. Now where is that lost engine? You won't find her here. Gordon, your face is falling off. Uh, uh, is that? That's right, it's sugar, Diesel. And if you don't leave, I'm gonna make you a nice cup of tea. No, I'm a coffee guy, I'm American. Get that out of here. Shut up, Pitchy. Back when we could actually say shut up in kid shows. I miss those days. But what happened to your sparkle? I don't know, Thomas. I'll just have to sleep on that. On your sparkle? Why did Brett write Thomas to be an idiot in this movie? Sparkle, gold dust, magic, railroad, buffers, lost engine. Third descent into madness that we've had over the last ten minutes. My god. <laughs> Why couldn't you travel anymore to the island of Sodor? Or back home here to us in shining time? It's like... I think it's less of Shining Time falling into disrepair without Mr. Conductor, more like teenagers just wrecking the place. I mean, this does look like a, a teenage funhouse right now. I don't 
don't suppose you know where track three is, do you? Captain, on your left. Literally, on your left, there is a train conductor on your left! Is it that one? Well, why not? Oh, uh, stupid kid. I know how the moon must feel When you make someone happy I'm doing what Viva Reverie did in The Perfect Pair. You guys get the reference? I hope Viva sees this. I hope the Bronies see this. This would be pretty funny. If you look closely, you can see him reading a book called The Romance of Railroads. <laughs> can I get a copy of that book? Pay attention to me, Mr. Stone! I need some bloody coal! Left a bit. Ah, uh, look right a bit! You know, without context or visuals, this scene would sound way more mature. <laughs> I'm sorry, James. I'm going to the windmill to search for something important. Now off you go to work, please. Okay, Mr. C, keep your steam up. You really could have just asked James for a lift. They only said if you can't remember the clue, the windmill will remind you. But where is the windmill? In the opening credits of the show, it's easy to find. Just ask Thomas, it's on his branch line. And if he finds her, I fear that will destroy us all. Well, you don't look very scared about it, Toby. If anything, you're glad he's going to destroy everything. Why are you smiling? Now I'm going to look for Mr. Conductor. Let us get back to work. That's what he would want. I clearly don't give a damn about the inevitable doom of our race. How about a race, Thomas? Um, um, sorry, Bertie. I can't today. Reusing shots! God damn it. Oh my god, they cut off Donald Trump's hair for this movie. I notice you left your thinking cap behind. Try these instead, they're good for the brain. Gone fishing rabbit. Why did I always think that was the same rabbit from Winnie the Pooh? Well, 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 well. Guess like, as a kid, I always thought these kids' movies and films coexisted in the same world. Bit weird, don't you think? Mountain? Fountain? That might be something. I think I'll try the celery. No, you need to try the antipsychotics, honey. Sausage? Bicycle? I have to find a bellflower. I need to make a call. Well, it's a summer Sunday and I'm under. Michael Lee Rogers time! Yeah, best character in the movie. Not really, but you know. Actually, yeah, I would go as far to say he is the best character in the movie. Could ever give my life to one girl. I think as kids, we all wanted that milkshake. I mean, look at it. It looks so Good! It looks so delicious. Ha. Flowers as phones. I choose to accept this as confirmation by headcanon that Alice in Wonderland takes place in a small portion of the island of Sodor. Oh, hi Kaz. Are you in a tunnel? This, this isn't a very good line. Railway line. Ah. You have to help me find the source of all our family's gold dust. What is the source? What is the source? I'm counting on you! Hello? I want my money back. So do the soccer moms who took their kids to watch this movie. We hate you, soccer moms. It's because of you the director's cut isn't out to the public on DVD. Where is everyone? What have you brought me here for? Oh, this is one of my favorite lines in the movie. Yeah, we got a poop joke! <laughs> At least I believe it's a poop joke. If it is, it's the first and last poop joke Thomas ever made, I believe. See you, Lily. <laughs> I like how much like... Well, damn. But what is this stuff? Oh, great, you got glitter on your hands. That stuff is never coming off. Mr. Conductor! Mr. Conductor! Thomas? Just yell Thomas's name! What is wrong with you? How could I possibly say that I'm really useful now? And then he died. Show over. Stacy, I'm a little nervous. Hey, look, it's Boomer. Hey, how you doing, Boomer? Maybe your grandpa is too. It's been a while since you've seen each other. Bye, Boomer. Thanks for participating. We'll see you during the chase scene, don't worry. You said I wish. I wish? Oh, yes. 
I was the director's cut of this movie was released to the public. As the sound of ladies' magic echoed through the night on Muffled Mountain, the engines on Sodor had her very much in their thoughts. You know, originally there was supposed to be a whole song here uh, from the post train, which would have been really nice to see as well. The journey gets bumpier and bumpier. That's what she said. <laughs> I think that's how we travels here on a secret railway. Belonging to the lost engine. Percy, you are clever. Look what you two little bugs have done now. You can't see me, but you can see my legs down here. And now Diesel 10 knows the plan. You idiots. I sounded a little bit like... Wallace. <laughs> That's weird. Why did I sound like Wallace? That uh, was unintentional. Is that one of the horrid lorries in the background as well? I think so. That's kind of cool. I didn't. I didn't notice that. Is that Butch as well? That's Butch. I can see Butch there too. Oh my God! How did I never notice that before? Oh, Diesel won't bother with an old engine like me. He thinks I'm really useless. I love that line so much. To Toby is such like a he, he doesn't care about the impending doom. It's just amazing. There he is. There are so many scrapped engines here. It's like walking into a graveyard, but the dead bodies are on the surface, just laying around, decomposing. It's creepy, isn't it? Correction. Join the party that's over. <laughs> Just like Twinkle Toe's magic railway is gonna be over. I love how Splatter and Dodge are like, what, what, what's he talking about? It's time to finally put Twinkle Toe's lights out. In a moment, your tone, I'm gonna kill him. Mm. Mm. It's the old teapot! I love that name for Toby, the old teapot. Brilliant. Oh, you damn idiot, boss. Diesel was in a dump, but the steam engines were still right on track. Alright, time for another musical number, folks. Hooray! And it's the most popular one of the movie. He's the really oh, there's Butch again. He's the hey, how did they fix the shed so quickly? They, they fixed the smelter shed. It was literally the night before toppled over onto Diesel 10. Like, we saw that a few seconds ago. And oh my god! Oh my god, they scrapped Toad! They scrapped Toad in the, in the distance! Oh my god, Toad is dead! Oh, that's why he's not in this movie. Oh boy. Wow, they got rid of a lot of characters. They literally just scrapped every other engine that wasn't part of the main seven. They just killed all the other ones. They didn't need them for this movie. Did anyone ever notice the engine in the distance just behind Thomas on the main line? Is that just me? Because I just saw a brake van just go around the corner. That's a little weird, don't you think? One of my biggest disappointments for this whole movie. This and the opening shot at the beginning is all we see of Natford Station, and what we saw just before with the night, main, night train scene. Why? Natford is such an iconic area in the series. All of these musical numbers, and no one is worried about Mr. C because at this point he's still out there by himself, probably dying. You know, for kids! I've got boiler ache, and I'm collecting one, two, three, four, five, six trucks of special Island of Sodor coal for you. Objection! He's in his new shape. He doesn't need special coal anymore. Plot hole, go damn it! Hello, Thomas, and your five coal trucks! It's six. Learn how to count your dumb old lorry. Diesel D199 reference again, if anyone got it. Hello! Remember me? Fat Hat won't have much use for you. Really? He could have gotten away, just ran up the hill and he would have been absolutely fine, but instead he took the time to put on his hat and coat and got caught. Say hello to Pinchy! Say hello to my little friend! <laughs> okay, Twinkle Toes. I know about the buffers. Can we just take a moment to, like, process that Diesel 10 is threatening to kill Mr. C if he doesn't give him information. This is a Thomas movie, remember? Let's not go too over the edge, but I still love this. This is fantastic. You did that! You! For shame. How come you let Twinkle Toes escape? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, uh... Well, I, I did it on... Purpose. Put in the AC race best joke of Zootropolis. You liar! Hiya, I'm Patch. I'm Nelly. And I'm Chauffeur. Ch -ch 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 
Junior? What was Junior even doing before he teleported into Shining Time? Was he literally just sitting in the room just going choo 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 on the skateboard? Did he have nothing better to do at that point? I overslept in the elevator, honey. Do you want to come? Can we be back here by sunset? Rebecca! So shit! Oh well. That means I'll have to use Cuz's extra supply of gold dust. Surely this won't bite me in the backside during the final climax. Are you ready, Lily? Here are the buffers. No! Oh no! Going into a portal! Oh! Good morning! Why does Bertie, throughout the movie, sound like he's got something stuck in his throat? Come on, Lily. I'm very at home on trains. Engines! Ah! I'll send Percy back to fetch you. We've heard that one before. And there you go, that's their only line. Paycheck, there you go. Have a nice day, ladies. Come on, Lily. I would have liked to see like little cameos from other characters in this movie, like Miss Kindly and stuff like that. That would have been amazing to see her in this movie. Because she she seemed like a really great like Thomas character back in like season one. This would have been a great opportunity for that, but no. I do know the clue. Stoke up the magic in the mountain. Uh, really? Your one chance to remember the one way to get gold dust back? The most important thing that you've been looking for this whole time and you forget about it in like five minutes? I'm starting to see where people don't like this movie now. Oh, hello, Hattie. Hattie. I love that. The way he says it is just so funny to me. <laughs> the expression on Thomas' face, he could clearly care less that Junior's gone. He's like, oh, thank God I was getting so tired of him. What's gonna happen to Junior now? Well, my family is usually pretty good at getting themselves out of trouble. Eventually. I don't know what eventually means, but it sounds very, very long. So your engines know what the word disputation means, but you don't know what the word eventually means. This was not the same woman that worked on the first five seasons! Howdy, partner. Excuse me, coming through. Pardon me. How is no one talking about this talking tumbleweed that never appears again after this movie ever or briefly mentioned? Why is there a talking tumbleweed in Thomas the Tank Engine? It doesn't make any sense. Mr. Conductor, I was supposed to be back by sunset. Rebecca! Soy shit! Ah! She can whistle. I've heard her. Yeah. So have I. It's because she's magic. Really? You didn't notice! I don't know her special secret. And I need to know it now more than ever. Because of Lily? Well, no sh because of Lily. Dumb kid. Thomas, will you please take Lily? Through the buffers? But what if I go on the railway and my wheels don't work? But what if they do? But what if... If Thomas is really, really hesitant to help out anyone outside of Sodor. What did Little engines can do big things. And Thomas was never seen again. The end. Damn, CGI Thomas is dummy thick here. Whoa. You're a really useful engine, Thomas. She said the thing! She said the thing! She said it! Ooh. And now you know how Gordon feels and Gordon takes a tumble. I, I know that episode didn't come out yet, but... Uh. Whoa, 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 hold on. Is that portal always open in the ground? Because what if a family is going out for a picnic or a walk one day and then all of a sudden just oh do, 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 no! and then it's disappear into the magic railroad, never to be seen again. <laughs> Can we get like a, 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 a small animation of that please? I would love, I would love that. I'm sorry Lily, I'm sorry because I haven't been whatever it is, responsible, reliable, really useful, I will be! What is James doing just idling here in the snow? Okay, whatever. Ah, James. There's a reason why I put the whistle there in the animation, because I could have paid the way for a very funny joke if they kept it in the film. It's empty. Here we go. Junior, what are we gonna do? We'll think he's something. 
The attempts of murder continue from Diesel 10, like... From the halfway point of this movie, things get really intense. Are you ready? To die! Junior, we're all out of gold dust, aren't we? Bankrupt. So is Mattel. hey -o! This scene here, when Lady Comes to Life, is one of the most beautiful parts of the movie, and I love it to no end. The soundtrack is gorgeous, the visuals are lovely. I love it, it's just so amazing. And I feel like this film just doesn't get enough credit for stuff like this. It's beautiful. Tasha would have loved this journey. Yes, she would. And she'd love it that you're with me now. It's just a shame that she's dead. Ooh, too soon. So, Burnett, you didn't forget about magic. It's safe inside you. Hi, Brett Allcroft. How are you doing? Thomas! You found her! And she's beautiful! Ignore all the shipping for a minute, okay? I really feel like they should have taken the time to, like, explain how Thomas got back here. I mean, sure, he fell through a portal on the ground and that would have taken him, like, to the Magic Railroad. I think it would have taken him to, like, a railway that went through Burnett's workshop and then, like, down the same path as Lady towards her on the Magic Railroad. I feel like that's probably what happened. I think that's my headcanon, anyway. He fell through the ground, went on a railway that led through the workshop of Burnett onto the Magic Railroad. That's my headcanon. Oh, are we glad to see you? Now we can go back to Shining Time! Now here's a question that I want to raise. If Junior and, um, Mr. Conductor went back to Shining Time, since they are in scale with Burnett and Lily and all that, if they went back on, like, with Lady, does that mean that when they go back they'll stay normal size? Like, same size as Stacy and all that? Because I feel like... That's probably what would happen, or would they magically turn small again? Like, I guess we'll never know. It's interesting to think about, isn't it? That's a pretty powerful scene there. There's, that's implied, not- it's not treated too much that way. And it's not explained to the audience that these two will die if they don't get their gold dust fix. And it's it's pretty sad, actually. Like, there's already been a bit of death with Tasha, and it's... Yeah, it was... This this was powerful, and this film doesn't get enough credit for stuff like this. Uh -huh. There's the blue purple! Uh -huh. It's time for the chase scene! Uh, who needs you, squad? We need them, Diesel 10. We liked those two. I missed them. What's the, the Christmas tree's on fire. There's a George Carlin reference there, if anyone got that. Now I'll get you, Burnett Stone! I'll get you, Burnett Stone, and the little engine, too! Benji's Reusing shots! Again! Oh my god! Really? Don't be so- <sighs> Never mind, keep going. Here I come! Duck Boomer! <laughs> yeah! I do a pretty good impression of his laugh, I, I didn't notice that until now. Pretty fast for a puffball. Yeah, can't believe I'm being outran by two little tank engines. This is embarrassing. <laughs> well, looks like I'm taking a trip to the big city port. <laughs> Go ahead, Lily. Throw it up in the air. Please. Please. Lily. Drag the scene out as much as we can, Mara Wilson. Just keep dragging it out. Don't stop. Just keep it on for about a minute. <laughs> it's literally what it feels like. Just drag it way too far here. Lady, you're a really helpful engine. And helping each other brings to life the magic in all of us. Shut up, lady. Bye, Michael. Thanks for participating. Now, we'll always remember our shining time together. People call Lily's character weird for having a stuffed animal, even though she's like a, a teenager. Well, I've got mini moose and I'm 18, so shut up. Ah. 
know there's probably a lot of harsh chemicals in that ice cream. Or you could just eat it anyway, whatever. And so we've come to the happy end of our story. And it's time for all of us to go home. Just like Thomas. Oh yeah! There was a Thomas in this movie, wasn't there? I almost forgot! So we're done. We we survived Thomas and the Magic Railroad. It it was a- I think it's a pretty good film, it's nostalgic, like, there are- there are some flaws, obviously. But, all in all, it's just a great film to just sit back and watch, like, who cares about what people on the internet say? Because at the end of the day, it's about what you think about a movie. You don't judge the film based off of everyone else's observations. Nostalgia Critic could bash this film to hell and back. But I'm always gonna come back and just appreciate that this was the first attempt at a cinematic release for Thomas, and I think it was done really well, and I personally, The Amazing Game of One opinion, I love this movie. It's got some flaws, but I love it. And I think that's all I pretty much wanted to say. There were a few weird things, like mixing Thomas and Shining Time, those were a bit weird decisions to me, but other than that, the acting was alright. Mara Wilson, like, I don't, she, she didn't really show too much. Uh, like emotion here, like I definitely Michael E. Rogers, um, Peter Fonda, and um, uh, Mr. Conductor Alec Baldwin. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot his name. They they really they did really well in this movie. I I liked their performances, especially Alec Baldwin. He is very enthusiastic, especially when he was losing his mind. Um, as for the 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 engines. Neil Crohn as Diesel 10 steals the show. He is such a good actor in this movie, and his voice is so memorable. It's perfect. Like, the original voice of the director's cut was good, but Neil Crohn knocks it out of the park. I love his voice. It's so awesome. One thing I also appreciate for this movie, too, is the stakes. Like, the stakes are really high for this movie. Like, Diesel 10 intended on killing all the steam engines, and having the Island of Soda be overrun with diesels, and Mr. C almost died because of a lack of gold dust, and Lady could have been left dead forever, like, because she was faceless, she had, she couldn't say anything, she couldn't do anything, she would have been out of power if it went for Lily, and that's another problem I have, Lily was the hero, and Thomas and Friends were just like side characters, but I think I can forgive the movie for that, because much like, I, I, Call this a Shining Time movie and not a Thomas film. Because though it does have Thomas plastered on the front, so did the Shining Time um, logos and everything. I've seen some of the Shining Time logos, and it does have Thomas on the big picture, but that didn't stop it from Shining Time sucking up most of the, the story. Because there was a story outside of the Thomas episodes, and Thomas is just part of the lesson of the episode. Um, so yeah. I'd, I'd definitely call this, in its defense of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, I'd say it's more of a Shining Time film. But still, in, in the end, I, I really like it. It's got flaws, sure, but I'm always going to appreciate the effort that was put into this film. And you could say, like, a lot more for this film in comparison to stuff like Misty Island Rescue or uh, Big World Pig Adventures, which were pretty awful. Um, Stuff like The Adventure Begins. The Brenner era was pretty good. I, I saw all the movies from Brenner era. I love them. They're fantastic. And yeah, that's all I really wanted to say about this movie. So this is The Amazing Game of One One signing off. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us on this one. This was fun. Wait a minute. Where was Edward in this movie?